What's up guys? In this video I'm going to go over 5 tips to IGL like a pro. This is the first video I'm going to do in a series of in-game leading videos. So let's just dive into the first tip. Tip number one, develop opening protocols for each person on CT side. Now this is something that you're going to do in practice as the IGL. What is an opening round protocol? Basically, at the beginning of the round, you've just spawned in. Here's an example. I'm the A player. I'm A anchor. I'm going to go into this corner. And I'm going to listen for steps. If I hear a rush, it's going to sound like a stampede. If I hear a rush, I'm going to throw a molly like so and then get ready for maybe a flash and then fight them as they push my molly. And the highway player should be running up to toxic barrels to help me. Um, that's like what you're going to do every round. That's the meta or the most effective tactic available. If I don't hear a stampede... I'm going to get this smoke right here and smoke this off. Now this is very effective because if you just throw a smoke right here at the beginning of the round, that smoke doesn't last as long throughout the entirety of the round as the smoke that you throw from here after waiting a while. So that's pretty interesting. Then I tell people to um, come around to this side while the smoke's up, throw a nade in like so sometimes, maybe spam some bullets. You can also set up and throw this flash right here. And that just kind of keeps terrorists honest and afraid of any flash pushes through the smoke. That's basically the opening round protocol. And I go over the best positions. Like, this is a really good angle here. Um, getting up onto this box from Cat. And then peeking over like this is a good angle. I just show them the angles, basically. So that's your opening round protocol. Everyone on the team for CT side should have that job down. Tip number two, utilize contact-based manipulation in your executes. What does that mean? So on T side, let's say you do some mid action early. You come out mid, maybe you throw a flash like so, a flash or a smoke off the same spot, and you see someone white box and someone else, maybe someone boosted sees someone Z. So you know there's two mid and you haven't killed anyone and no one's really taken any damage on either side, but contact has been made. So with all that pressure on it, with all that pressure in middle, the CT middle players are really going to be focused on middle. So at this point, if you were to have a smoke dropped in here and maybe a flash, oh my goodness, here we go. Maybe a flash over the wall like so that blinds basically everyone on a site you could throw that flash and have two players pop out and they're probably going to have a two-on-one against the a site player because this highway player who is so focused on middle because of the action middle is now smoked off from the action so that's what contact based manipulation is you should be using that in your executes and when you develop your executes um, that's just a quick example. There's a, a thousands of different ways you can use contact-based manipulation. And if you guys think that's a cool concept, maybe I'll do a video on it. Tip number three. Each round should begin with a goal, and everyone should understand what their job is in that goal. How many times as a player have you heard an IGL, okay, full save, and that's about it? You just have five players with USP spread out across the map, and you kind of just go into your normal default, and it's not going to be effective because you have no utility and you have a USP. So instead, on a full save, you as an IGL should have a plan for the full save. So some of the plans I do on full saves, for example, would be pushing out mid, counter boosting, and then setting up a crossfire. You could have two players hiding sandbags, two players up highway, and then one player on A. And then when they push up mid, four, four USPs cross-firing onto someone is probably going to get a kill or two. You're going to damage their economy, maybe pick up a rifle. That's actually a goal. Everyone knows what they're doing. And that's how you can actually make a full save be effective. I've won rounds on full saves off of goals like that. Tip number four, make mid-round decisions based on map control and player information. So as an example, let's say you're on CT side and it's mid-round and the terrorists have taken mid-control and your two B players on CT are in positions like so, where this checkers player has a lot of vision into B main and then your B anchor is set up like so, where they've just got a ton of vision into B main and they see that there's not much going on there. You can then tell them to throw a smoke like so. I'm lining up right here, going here. Tell them to throw that smoke, which 
helps you get control of B main. And then you can just leave the anchor here maybe in Sunroom. And then go ahead and start rotating a player off. Now you could do that if they've taken mid or if they've been in a quiet default. Basically, you're looking at what the terrorists are doing. And if they haven't made much pressure B or if they've taken mid and you need to counter them taking mid by taking more map control from them, then you need to make the call to do that. If they take middle and you're on and your A site player is going to be pinched, basically, the, re the response to Terrace taking mid as an A player should be to take A main. You can throw a molly like so and a flash like this. And that's going to molly out back here. Most likely, an enemy is going to be standing right here. Now, it's a risky play to do, and you might get killed. But alternatively, you might get in a main for free. And if they're going to do some type of A hit, you could set up an, an off angle like this, where you're going to see their shoulder before they see you, and you'll get an easy kill, kind of making up for the fact that they have mid control. So these are the type of decisions you want to make based off map control and the enemy information that they've given you. Now, this is going to be a little bit of a longer tip than the previous ones, because this is a little bit more of a complicated concept. So what if the CTs on B have used up all their utility. How do you know that? Well, in a T side default, you should have a player coming into, I don't even remember the smoke. I think you line up here. You should be having a player come into B main and throwing these lurk, this lurk utility, where they throw a smoke like that and then a molly like so. Oh boy, I'm rusty. A molly like so. <laughs> and then that gets them B main control. So if they start throwing this utility and they see two mollies, a smoke, and some flashes come out of B site, they can tell the IGL, okay, they've used up almost all their utility in B, plus I have all of B main. I own B main. If that's the case, your team can set up for a really good B execute. Tip number five, be the one voice IGLing. Do not have multiple quote-unquote IGLs. I say quote-unquote because there shouldn't be multiple people with the official IGL title. So anyone else that makes calls mid-game is not a real IGL. They're just being a nuisance. So let's go over an example. Let's say you're IGL and you say, hey, let's go into a default and do a late execute on A. So everyone goes into a default and this B lurker on your team gets a pick. And then he goes, oh, I gotta pick, I gotta pick B. Let's let's run, let's run B. Everyone, let's go B. Green smoke mid, and he starts calling for everyone to basically go B. So the call was to do a late execute on A. There may have been a reason that the IGL wanted to do an execute on A. Maybe the IGL has a read on that team. Um, maybe the IGL isn't even gonna call. Let's go B after you get a pick B. Maybe he would have called. Let's go A because. He has paid attention to the CT's habits all game because that's what IGL does. And he knows that if they are going to lose a player on B, that they're just going to stack B, give up mid, or play retake on A, and that you should instead do an execute on A. These are the type of situations that you run into when you have someone trying to step up or just you have that type of personality where they're just trying to IGL when they're actually not the IGL. So this is a very common problem I see in ESEA Open for teams that I coach. It's like the one of the most common problems I see is they have bad communication because of that over IGLing from people that aren't the IGLs. So what happens? What happens is, is teams get frustrated because they're being pulled in different directions. They're not sure what to do. They're not sure who to listen to. This affects their decision making, which makes them make slower decisions. And CS, the faster you make a decision, that's what you need to do. If you make a decision two milliseconds faster than the enemy, you're probably going to beat the enemy. So if you're making slower decisions and you're making poorer decisions, you're making the incorrect decision, you're now going to lose rounds and it's going to just cascade into you losing more and more rounds. So that's my last tip. Have one IGL and have him be the single voice giving directions. What this lurker should have done instead was got the pick and then just said, hey, I got to pick B. And then listen to what the IGL says. All right, guys, that concludes my top five tips to IGL like a pro. I'll be doing multiple videos of this type in a series called basically how to end game lead. So if you have any questions or comments or have 
any ideas about what you would like to learn to be a better IGL, leave them in the comments below. I'll, I'll respond. And please like and subscribe if you enjoy this type of content. And I appreciate you watching the video.